Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney. I'm gonna adjust the camera like so. Uh, we have a publicly posted question that we're answering today. It was posted by THAW, YouTube user THAW, um, who I will refer to as Thaw, which I'm sure is not, not correct because there's a space in there, but I'm gonna call you Thaw anyways because that's the easiest way for me to phonetically say your username. Uh, this question was posted two weeks ago, which uh, is evidence that I do indeed suck because I should have gotten you an answer sooner. Uh, we're getting a lot more questions these days, and um, I travel a little bit in there. So sounds like I'm trying to make excuses, but the fact of the matter is, I should answer your question sooner. Here is the question. I have, set, I have a settlement agreement that I've yet to sign that was reached at mediation. I noticed that for the release, it includes claims unknown to me and any claims that may arise stemming from my employment with my old company. I'm not really comfortable waiving those claims since up until recently, I hadn't even known my employer retaliated against me for reporting harassment. However, I feel I'm being pressured to sign it as is. Is this standard in settlement agreements? The companies have already tried to use pretext to excuse their actions and lied in regards to my employee record and relationship with them. All right, so your fears are correct. Your concerns are real. Counterpoint, this is essentially boilerplate. I, I, you know, I don't have what you're looking at in front of me but what you're describing generally sounds like a boilerplate release. It's not that novel. And the result of that, if it's boilerplate, is you're gonna find that attorneys, um, especially defense attorneys, are going to be very, very reluctant to depart from boilerplate. There's a lot of reasons for this, but the simple answer is boilerplate is created over time and many, many attorneys, hundreds of attorneys, Thousands of attorneys, in some cases, use boilerplate, right? Uh, I work off, I'll give you an example, a retainer agreement that's been worked on by 30 or 40 different attorneys, right? Because what happens is it's t tested over time and over the course of 30 years has been developed to be a safer, more effective agreement that is good for both clients and for attorneys, right? So there's this impact of, of attorneys, especially young attorneys, especially defense attorneys, especially conservative risk averse attorneys being extraordinarily reluctant to re depart from boilerplate, right? If they have language they know works and that they know probably won't give rise to any big surprises, they're not going to want to leave that. And what you're pushing for, which is very rational, is you're saying, listen, I don't wanna waive claims I don't know about yet. Right? There, there's things that you may have done that I won't know about, and I'm signing this release. I'm giving up the ability to address what you might have done to me, and that concerns me. So you're being rational, uh, but I think it is somewhat reluctant, but, excuse me, it is somewhat unlikely that they're going to give you that concession if you push for it in the settlement agreement. You can push for it. You have the ability to push for it. You don't have to sign that agreement, unless of course you already have, uh, but you you know, you know can negotiate. That is a term that could be a rational sticking point for you. It is also a term that is very likely to be a rational sticking point for them. They're gonna say, listen, one, our goal here is to pay you to be done with you. We don't want any more litigation with you unless we do something new to you, right? I don't have the language of your agreement in front of me, but in most settlement agreements, in most boilerplate agreements, you're gonna see that everything up until the moment the agreement is signed is released, almost everything. But anything that happens after the agreement is signed, anything the employer does to you, like a new act of retaliation, that generally in most settlement agreements would give rise to a new claim. I can't say what yours is, I, can't, I haven't read yours, and nor am I even necessarily allowed to, I don't know what state it's in or anything else, right? Um, but I'm saying like, that is generally how it works and something you can talk to your attorney about, like, Hey, am I at least protected if they do something new to me after the date of the signing of this agreement? Right. 
that might help. It might help you give some peace of mind. Um, but I hear you. It's frustrating. It's a sticking point in hundreds of cases every year. And it doesn't feel right or fair. You're not wrong. I wish I had better tactical information for you beyond saying there's a good chance they're not going to give on that. I'm going to track the video for follow-up comments. If there's more I can answer, if there's more I can do that's helpful, I will do that. Uh, certainly, I want to help. And I guess if you have a settlement that you can live with, congratulations on your settlement. I hope it's what you hope for. Take care.